welcome to Creation in the 21st Century. I'm your host, Carl Ball, founder and director of the Creation Evidence Museum in Glen Rose, Texas. The title to today's program is Dinosaurs in the Desert. Now, we're all familiar with the fact that the Gobi Desert has provided hundreds and thousands of dinosaur remains, some complete dinosaurs, dinosaur eggs. We're familiar with the fact that in the western United States for long decades, intrepid discoverers have unearthed uh, some time dislodging from the sedimentary deposits in rock itself, some time from the sands of the desert, uh, marvelous dinosaurs that are memorialized in great museums around the world. But today, we have a South American desert that is uh, demonstrating some incredible artifacts, a narrow desert that reaches hundreds and hundreds of miles adjacent to the Amazon and other jungles and adjacent to mountain areas where dinosaurs in the past roamed. Now, according to evolutionary theory, these dinosaurs died out 64 million years ago, some of them tens of millions of years before that. However, according to the biblical record, man and dinosaur lived contemporaneously. Dr. Dwayne Gish, a very personal friend of mine and of the museum, a great, great creation scholar, great academic, was debating Dr. Ernst Mayer. And during that debate, Dr. Mayer jokingly and laughingly said, if your friends at Glen Rose and elsewhere can really prove that man and dinosaur lived contemporaneously, that would totally destroy our evolutionary theory of the progression of living systems culminating in man, and went on to other areas of the debate. Well, today's program actually destroys that evolutionary theory because we have evidence that man and dinosaur did live contemporaneously. One of my very finest guests over the years has been Dr. Dennis Swift, intrepid cryptozoologist. Dennis, what a pleasure to have you back on the program. Well, it's always a pleasure to be on your program. You know, like Paul said, uh, his love increased for the church, and my love for you has increased through the years. You know, love is like your waistline. It's expandable, <laughs> but our love just expands, and I really yeah. appreciate you and the work you're doing in the forefront against evolution. Well, Dennis, you have been a major factor in providing information, and I call you the intrepid cryptozoologist. You are digging up the past and credible information in that past that shows that man and dinosaur did live contemporaneously. And you never forget a detail. You never forget a path. I've been with you on some of these uh, trails that you've taken me on. You never forget a fence line. Yeah. And uh, by the way, our ratings go sky high when you're on the program. I think it's because of who you are and what you have to say. Well, thank you very much. As I like to say, all my relatives have PhDs to fall back on plumbing, hauling, and distilling. So they watch the, the program, and that's why the ratings go up. <laughs> well, good, good for you. Good for you. What do well, you have to tell us today? I want to take you to the driest part on the planet is the Altacama Desert in southern Peru. The Altacama Desert stretches for 1,000 miles from southern Peru down to Argentina. And anything that's buried there in the tombs is remarkably preserved. Yes. And here is in the area of Ica and Nazca, Peru. I've been the, there with you. Yes, the pre-Columbian Nazcans who inhabited the Altacama Desert from about 300 B.C. to 8 or 900 A.D. Here is one of their ceremonial cities called Kawache. And Kawache, uh, in 300 uh, A.D., there was a massive flood and a big earthquake in 350 A.D. And so this is the world's greatest giant mud brick city, what remains of it. And this is the artist's rendering of Kawachi, all the pyramids that would have been there, uh, you know, 40, 50 giant pyramids. Marvelous. Which is also in a... 40 or 50 in one area, area like yes. within a square yes. mile? Yes, within a few square miles. And in October, with satellite photos, we have found that before they abandoned this area, they sealed pyramids and buried them 
beneath the sand. Here's one of the pyramids about a mile away from this one. There's two pyramids here. incredible. Yes, it's buried beneath the sand. I don't know if you can see this yes, satellite image. And it's about 320 feet by 300 feet, uh, only about 100 feet less than the giant pyramids in uh, Egypt, and maybe a 150 plus, 15 stories high or so. So beneath this, uh, you know, the desert jealously guards their secrets. We have some works to do. Yes. Works. Plural. When this uh, is excavated, there's going to be all kinds of artifacts and information found. Consistent uh, with what you're going to tell us about I'm going to talk to you about, and dinosaur. Uh, you know, archaeology is a career that leads one to ruins. You don't want to, you want to be married to an archaeologist because the older you get, the more they fall in love with you. That's good for my wife. Well, here's what happens is, these are Harango wooden poles. This is the Estaquaria, a part of Kawachi, and uh, this is very hard wood. But they also carved images on these poles. Last for centuries. And is it possible that these people saw living, breathing dinosaurs? You know, and we're not suggesting these are the, are no, the peoples. The, no, but, uh, but, but and did they see dinosaurs? Uh, Lewis Jacobs, who was the past president of the Vertebrate Paleontological Society of America, said the co-occurrence of dinosaurs and man, such an association would dispel the notion of an earth of vast antiquity. And the entire <coughs> biblical history of creation, the day of rest and the seven literal days would not be myth, they'd be history, and evolution would be vanquished. In other words, evolution would melt down faster than the wicked witch of the West in the Wizard of Oz if dinosaurs and man lived together. It'd be obliterated. He himself would be vanquished. And one of the poles that was found in the tombs there at Kawachi is a small pole with a hydrosaur dinosaur on the bottom. In fact, you have that. I actually possess that Harango wood pole. Now, these people who built these pyramids in the desert were also the ones who engineered archaeological's most baffling enigma. And this is the Nazca lines. The Nazcans in the desert, over 37 miles by 25 miles wide, they carved lines that are laser straight. Some of them go 25 kilometers. They come to a mountain, they stop, and they'll start precisely on the other side of the mountain. They turn the Earth's crust into an art canvas, uh, the desert into a colossal doodling pad. And, Marvelous and there's, description. Dennis, and there's, you flew me over that desert That's right. in a small plane. You and your wife That's were in right. the back seat. I mean, that close. The uh, pilot didn't understand English that well. Uh, yes. and, and I get motion sickness. Yes. I will never forget, as uh, you were so gracious to tell him uh, that you wanted me to see all that was in the Nazca yes. line yeah. uh, makeup. And there's over 1,300 lines, zigzags, rectangles, uh, geomorphs. There's uh, 70 large uh, geomorphs, these, these carvings in the desert of animals like the whale and hummingbirds and pelicans. But, but incredibly, that discovery. in 2004, we're flying at low altitude, and probably nobody stepped foot here for more than a thousand years. Uh, this, on top of a plateau, these lines, there is a Strirocosaurus dinosaur about half the length of a soccer field. And you can see those stones here, but if we move here, we can see better that this is, you can see the crest of the dinosaur, Strirocosaurus, the horns on the end, the mouth and everything. And the and guides I, had never seen that? The they pilots had, never had never seen that seen before. this particular image. Now, they're trying now to say it's a dog, but it has horns and a crest. Uh, 